Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Well in this video I'm going to get back to work on the Cobra and we're going to install the oil cooler. Now these Cobras have a real rich history and if you've seen the most recent movie about Shelby and Ford you'd know why. Now this is what's interesting about this car. The only car to have, or the only model to have, the oil cooler was the 1966 427 Cobra SC, which stood for semi-competition, and this is how it worked. The Mark III went into production in 1965. Shelby took delivery on 100 cars that he was going to turn into race cars, but he missed the deadline to register it as a race car. So in 65, he never got to race any of those cars. So what he did was he took those 100 cars and in 66 he started making the Mark III 427 SC for sale and he sold 56 of them. Of those 56, 31 of them were detuned, they put a windshield on it, some bumperettes, did a few other things to make it more streetable and they sold them as street models which is why the 1966 427 SC is the most desirable model for the Cobra and it yields the most money like a million and a half dollars if you can find one. So anyway, in 1966 starting with chassis number CSX 3015, Shelby took that and he wanted to turn it into something special called the Super Snake, which was supposed to be the Cobra to end all Cobras. Well, he took, by the time he got to number 3303, he had the supercar with twin packs and superchargers on it, and he gave it to Bill Cosby. The car was too much for Bill Cosby, it was too dangerous, he couldn't handle it, so he gave it back to Shelby. Shelby, in turn, sold it to a dealer in Northern California, and that car was sold to a guy named Tony Maxey, who also had a hard time controlling the car, lost control when he was at a light, the throttle stuck, took off, and he ended up going off a cliff into the ocean. So he died. It. And these cars are dangerous. I've driven a few of them, and, and they are pretty dangerous cars. They're, they're really strong, really fast. So anyway, now we have the oil cooler, and I'm trying to build this car as close to possible as a 1966 427 SC, which means I have to install the oil cooler. All I'm going to do in this video is, is mount the oil cooler and I have to do a lot of sheet metal work, so let's take a look. Now I want to mount this oil cooler somewhere in this neighborhood right here. And doing this is uh, important in that you plan ahead of time to know where your hoses are going to come in. i got two hoses. you got an in and out for the oil that's going to come in. And I'm going to mount it somewhere around here, which means I need something to hold it up. You see there's two sides here. There's two ends. Uh, that get mounting top and bottom. So if I'm going to mount this somewhere around here and I look at, look at where these oil lines are going to come in that means one of these oil lines are going to come in they're going to go just underneath that frame rail on that side just under the frame rail on that side which is perfect. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make a sheet metal side here to box in this side of the frame and the other side and I'm going to have to make a shelf that goes across to just in front of the radiator, go between these two sides, and then I can put some, make some metal brackets to screw this to, slide it on that shelf, and then make a bracket from the bottom going up to hold this thing stiff. Let's take a look inside to make sure that the hoses are going to go exactly where I want them to go. In order to make this work right, I have to install this oil filter relocator. So what's going to happen is, I'm going to mount this somewhere by the engine here, which will make it easy to change the oil filter from underneath. I have a line here that will be coming from a block that goes to where the oil filter was. Oil will come in here, go through the filter, it will go out to that line which goes up to the front, to the cooler, the return line, the return line will be right here, which you're going to have coming back and that will feed oil back into the engine. So that's basically how the system works. The oil filter relocator is nice because I can mount this kind of out of the way here and that will make it easy to change the filter from underneath. Pretty simple. Now my plan is to mock this up in cardboard. I'm going to make a cardboard side and a cardboard bottom. Get it all to fit to make sure it looks right. Then I can start cutting pieces out of metal. I have some nice 22 gauge stainless steel which will look really nice in there but first I have to take these fans out.
cardboard forms. Okay, this is the direction I'm heading. I am have to make this in two pieces. I'll have a back piece which will slide in there, and then I'll have a front piece to come over here with a lip with a Z bend over it, and it'll be screwed together here. And then my shelf, kind of, I'm going for something like this, which the where the this is where the uh, oil cooler will mount to. This will go in here, something like that, and I'll have an uh, angle on the bottom to support this through the whole thing. I think I'll go just below the bead on the radiator, just like that, so you can see the bead on the radiator. Keep working. Okay, I have real no secret or magic process here. Just put it in there, cut a little bit, trim a little bit, get it to fit right. This is where my overlap will be. And I have a little flat here. This will be where the shelf is going to sit, just so I know where to measure when I cut. And now this is where the shelf that's going to go in here will fit. Just under here like this. So it looks like I'm really close on my template. Now before I continue, before I make the other side, I think I'm going to make this side, put it in there, and make sure it's going to fasten correctly and it's going to look right. Alright, now this is what the two patterns look like when I put them next to each other. They line up just like that. And what I want to do is, I'm going to, I want to make sure that when I put this in here, the front pattern lays on top of the back. So I'll have to extend this by half an inch and extend this by half an inch that way. And the purpose for that is on this back part here, I want to put a Z bend. And the Z bend in the material is, is just looks just like this. It's called a Z. And it offsets the material. So when you have the back piece and you put the front piece on there, like this, it'll lay flat. See, nice and smooth here. And I can put rivets all the way down here to hold it together. The tool that puts the Z-Bend there puts a little mark all the way down, so I'll have to sand that down and polish that when I'm all done, but I'll have to polish these anyway. I'm going to put this nice little Z bend all the way down the edge here and use this tool here. It either This is a nice tool that either punches a hole or puts a Z bend in there. It's pretty simple. The tool is just, you just put it over the metal, put it all the way in, and pull the trigger. Move it along. And it makes a Z bend. a gap on top so I could put some rubber piping on the top there. Now I have my Z-Bend, now I can make the front part. The more time you spend on your template, the easier it will be to fit, and the more likely it is to fit the first time without much trimming.
put some Clico, drill some holes for some Clico pins to hold this in place. So here's what the completed panel assembly looks like. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drill some holes so when I put it back in I can hold it in place with Clico pins. And a Clico pin is nothing more than a pin that simulates a rivet. It goes in the hole, this expands and when you let go it pulls back and it holds the sheet metal together. So I'll just drill some holes for that. Well here's the finished panel and it goes all the way up to the top of the radiator. I'll show you that bend up there so it looks nice and clean. It comes all the way around, goes to the front and I have my shelf here and this is where I'll put the lower shelf that will come across to the other side and I'll cut that out where the oil cooler is going to be installed in the front here so I can cut that out. That's going to be the mount for the oil cooler. So these Clico pins will just hold this in place for now and let's go look at the top. From the top you can see it comes around I have a nice finish on the edge there so it goes around the radiator nice and clean and when I put the piping on there it will be nice and neat. So one side down, I hope the other side matches up, I can use the same template. Okay now here's the other side. Now the other side was about 70% the same as this side. So I did have to make some significant modifications to these templates to make it fit on the other side. Total work here is about 10 hours of work just to get to this point where I can make the shelf, to make the shelf here, go between this side and this side and that's what this video is all about getting a shelf in place and somewhere to mount the oil cooler
All right, now the oil cooler is mounted and it's really nice and clean. This is fairly rigid because, because of the way this is mounted. The oil cooler is holding this pretty stiff and when I actually get that rivet in there, it'll be probably pretty strong. But I think I'm going to try and come and find, find a way to, this is going to, I think this is going to bounce. Well, I don't know, these hoses are going to be pretty stiff holding this up. But, uh, I'll try and come up with some, well, I'm going to have to make some air dams, some, some little filler pieces to go in here on each side to direct the air towards the oil cooler. So maybe I can connect that to the body on the bottom and make a little air dam, uh, air dam in there. But I'll do it in a different video. So there you go. From start to finish, that took about three full days of work. And it doesn't always work out perfect. I, I had to make one of those parts twice because it really didn't fit right, the angle was wrong. So sometimes you screw up, you got to make an extra part. So sometimes it doesn't go right the first time. And also, I have the stainless angle. I think when I take that back out of there, I'll just weld this angle underneath to provide some added support so it doesn't bounce up and down. That's really what I'm concerned about. Next video, we'll put the hoses on. So we'll talk about making braided hoses, uh, what kind of hoses you should choose, how to install them, different ways to put them together, and then we'll install it, start it up, and see how it works. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.